All right, so uh, hello everybody. Um, my name is Rohit, I'm from Shite Day, Los Angeles. And uh, I think with reason, I am the last person to be speaking to you guys at this conference. So thanks to all 17 of you that are here. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about uh, is, is kind of, sort of wraps up what we've been talking about, but really from the creative perspective. Um, and uh, to put it bluntly, um, We've been talking about a lot of great advertising opportunities. Okay, cool. Yeah, this, you know, we can put great placement here, viewability here, programmatic there. And that's all well and wonderful. But I think what I want to do is flip it on his head um, and sort of talk about the end user consumer experience. While we are all brilliant minds and good people in here, to them we are the fucking devil. And so what I wanted to do is uh, sort of start with that. Um, really, I've been in online advertising for a decade now. Um, and I love it, but I hate it more than anything because it's really terrible. Um, so this is just a quick shot, 29 second pre-roll before a 45 second video. Um, you know, there's just uh, whether, it, it, it's pretty much every ad unit that we have out there. Um, a lot of these, they're, they're, the intention is good, but the execution is not where it's going to be going forward. Um, I mean, literally, even just with display and with some of these new viewable units that stick to your page and all this kind of, it's, it's literally what we're doing is we're taking away from the experience. Um, with this shot over here, if you guys can see it, um, I was trying to read this article. As I'm scrolling down that left thing, um, I could only read the sentence below and because it just stuck on the page the whole time. Um, so it, it's just our, our innovation right now might, uh, you know, it, it, there, it leaves room to be, uh, I guess it leaves room for, uh, for growth. Now we see about 5,000 brand messages a day. Um, this is between display ads, this is between a billboard, this is between a television commercial that we drone out to. This might be just even a logo on a t-shirt. Now what does that mean? That means it's, that's a lot of things for us to process. Now, the attention span of an American in the year 2000 was 12 seconds. That's not bad. Um, the attention span of an American in 2013 is six seconds. That is literally, in 13 years, we have gotten, I guess, 50% dumber. And just to put this into perspective, the attention span of a goldfish is eight seconds. <laughs> All right, so what does that mean? It means the way that we're trying to hit these people, the amount of times we're trying to reach these people, it's just too much. There's overstimulation. So, and that, what, what I wanna get to now is how do we reach people. We're gonna start with our hardest to reach target, the unicorn that we call the millennials. Um, now, I am a millennial, technically. Um, I'm on the very, very beginning of that. So I do ident identify as, you know, a Gen X. I'm a bit angsty, a bit angry. Um, but what I, I think it's important that we do talk about millennials. This, to, but this, this, by the way, this topic does not just extend to millennials, but I'm gonna focus on millennials because they are the ones that are going to grow into full-blown adults. They're the ones that are, are getting that buying power. They're the ones that can be purchasing everything. They're the ones that are really influencing the way we communicate. So, and they're also gonna be running the agencies and putting us out of business, because that, that triangle is very, very, very steep on the agency side. So we'll all be out of jobs and millennials will let us go when we're old. Um, but anyway, we're gonna focus on the millennials for this conversation. Now, 41% of them use ad block that are 18 to 29. 54% um, of males 18 to 29 use ad block. That means, on desktop, you're not hitting them. Banner blindness is one thing, but they literally opt out of advertising. Um, and then 87%, my smartphone never leaves my side night or day. It starts in the morning as your alarm. Then as you're in the bathroom, you're playing on Reddit. Then as you turn on your Spotify while you're in the shower, it blasts. You get out there, you, you get out of the shower, you get dressed, check your emails. Then you might send a few texts. Then you check Snapchat. Then you check Twitter. And before you know it, you're 40 minutes late to work, but you managed to have checked everything and your phone is by your side. It, you pull it out in meetings. You pull it out when you're in the elevator if you don't want to make eye contact with somebody. You pull it out when you're walking to meetings so you've got 15 seconds to go. So obviously you can get the point that mobile is very important. Now, um, what I want to talk about, and, God damn, and, and by the way, there's a few things. I think I sent this the deck in um, to, uh, to Digiday at like four in the morning. So there's some stuff missing. But whatever it is, this is the device that we're going to reach them in. Um, and there was a little graphic on that phone. Um, but uh, the way we're gonna reach them is not through display, it's not, it, it will be through video as part of it, but really it's through, it's through networks of communication. 
And the first thing we obviously think of is Facebook. Well, let us be, let that be the last thing we think of. Um, and if anybody follows Digiday a lot, um, I guess a lot of my quotes always end up bashing on Facebook, so I apologize if anybody from Facebook is here, I don't think they are, but sorry. Um, and now the reason that we're so down on Facebook is the, uh, it's kind of like that party that you throw in your house, you got all your friends over, and then your weird uncle comes over, and then your dad steps in, and like, hey kids, let's have a beer. And they just parents, what the parents are in, they ruin it. So Facebook has been ruined. Um, Instagram is starting to get ruined. Uh, Twitter is a whole different story, because Twitter is pretty much a news feed. Um, but what we want to do is, is find the places that millennials are spending time in. So this conversation is going to be talking about what comes, I mean, I'm going to hit Snapchat, but what is after Snapchat? What are the apps that you guys should be looking at? What are the things that you are going to ruin next? And that's what I'm going to go over. So, um, now what we need to do is we need to find a way to break through without ruining everything. So that's really, really important. Like I said, we are the worst people in the world when it comes to the people at home who matter the most, more than our clients. Because if we do not please those people at home, it doesn't matter. And the clients are most often wrong. We're most often wrong, uh, more often than not. So let us look at that user experience. Now, what I'm gonna do is take you through each of these apps, including Snapchat, find you ways, and talk about some ways to get in, and then I'll tell you, honestly, whether you should even bother with this app or not. So. In the end, before I get into the apps, ask not what these apps can do for your brand, but what your brand can do for these apps, as JFK once said in the 60s. So, we're gonna start off with the first category. These are ephemeral messaging apps. What these apps mean is, there's a message here, and then it's gone, all right? The first one, the most prolific, is Snapchat. So this is a way you can share a glimpse of your world. They've got over 700 million photos a day, and about 18% of all social media users. Those are old numbers. Snapchat is blowing up. It's a way to really document what is happening in real time, get a sort of voyeuristic view to a, from, uh, you know, from your friends. Um, they let you into their day, put little messages over. It's just a fun way to sort of have your own little reality show coming out of your pocket. Um, the great thing is brands can play in a, pretty, in a pretty fun way, but you don't even, if you don't have less than half a million, do half a million dollars to talk, to them, don't even bother. Um, but brands like Taco Bell, American Apparel, and the Jets have done stuff with them, amongst many others. Now, here's some of the, the opportunities. So Snapchat, so what you have is stories. Um, this sort of tells you, this, like, this is a, a snapshot from the World Cup, um, from the Brazil final. Now, what, uh, this is a very, this is an organic post. What it was, it's just, you know, at people that are in Brazil or watching the World Cup final, they'll post their Snapchats, and then that Snapchat editorial team will post them into a long, in, into a content. It's like a 300 second video, but it's like people going, oh, yeah, so, and stuff in Brazilian, and then blah, 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 blah. Uh, people celebrating from all over the world, and kind of everybody's enjoying this moment together. Now, what they rolled out is a, an opportunity for a brand to staple themselves onto an event or create their own event. And, for example, South By, I'm not sure who's got it, but I'm sure some brand is gonna be all over that. Um, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have UGC, 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 brand. UGC, 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 brand. And this is actually not that awful. Um, it's, and uh, I think they have something like a 70% view, uh, view rate and a 30% completion rate, which is insane. Um, another thing they just roll out is Discover. These are brands that are hosting their own uh, channels little stories that are updated on a daily basis uh, on Snapchat. Um, if you swipe all the way right, you can watch them, the ones that are right out once you've already watched. But it's kind of a way to have like a 24-hour news cycle, um, but directly to your phone. That's cool. You're not gonna get in this unless you have a way, way more than half a million dollars. Um, and anyway, you're a great content producer. Uh, Snapcash, I'm not sure how to work with this, but if you're involved in transactions in some way and there are social media in some way, think of it. But in the end, uh, Snapchat, the, great, the recommendation, yes. Go for it. Um, you, you know, it will be ruined soon, but go for it before you ruin it. Um, yo, the simplest and most efficient communication tool in the world, as they call themselves. Literally, all it is is the word yo. Um, you can send yo to your friends, they can yo you back. You hit a button, and you said yo. Um, this was kind of cool about like eight months ago for about 20 minutes. Um, but there's over 100 million yo's sent. Uh, and right now, they've introduced some new options to kind of like, you can yo different content similar to Discover, which talked about Snapchat, BuzzFeed and Comedy Central have it out there. Um, you can kind of like, you know, pick different categories and you can subscribe and they'll yo you links to different content. Eh, my uh, sort of recommendation on yo, no. Um, screen pop. Now, if honestly, Snapchat, with all the work of swiping open your screen and hitting the Snapchat button, that has gotten too much for these millennials. Um, and now, screen pop, what it is, you can literally send 
images from the screen of your Android phone without even having to go through the drama of opening your phone. Um, so right now there's 15,000 users, it's in beta. This application actually came from an app called Locket, which was an, uh, an Android app that sent ads to your home screen, you touched them and you interacted with them and you got paid to do so or incentivized to do so. They find out that was stupid as hell, but they made a great social app out of it. Um, so you, I think great opportunities for this is sort of, you know, concerts, things where there's, uh, you know, where people are trying to capture something in the moment and not have their phone out and, and, and uh, sort of ruining the experience for other people. It, uh, it's a way kind of things that are, you know, sports games, things are happening in the moment where speed is important. Um, so in terms of screen pop, I say yes, experiment with that. Um, next, anonymous messaging apps. Uh, don't need to explain that. Uh, Yik Yak. So Yik Yak is seen as the digital equivalent of a truck stop bathroom. Now what it is, it's people, uh, it, it generally, it, or you have a geofenced area, a university, or a school. Yik Yak, as much people are saying, oh my god, that teacher's fat. Oh man, Susie has herpes. So there's all these different, uh, like all these different things that you can, it's like, it's sort of a rumor mill. And, um, but it's a great way for people to kind of express like, hey, I'm really scared about this semester. If people also console each other. It's a way for them to sort of communicate in a really, really safe environment. That ends up turning to cyberbullying anyway. Um, but it's on over 1,300 campuses, and Yik Yak is blowing up. And not only that, it has the greatest logo in the history of digital design. Um, so uh, here's just an example one. I tried to FaceTime campus police last night, 24 upvotes. Um, the guy next to me in the library is smacking so loud, it's infuriating. It's infuriating. People upvote what's good and not, no pro profiles, no password, all anonymous. Um, my verdict is no, stay away. Um, it's just a little bit dangerous for brands, and there's really, what the hell is a brand going to contribute in that space right now? Um, whisper. Now this is similar. This is where you can sort of uh, anonymously post images with sort of like text uh, over them. It looks like really shitty memes from the early 2000s, um, but it's also big in college campuses. Um, originally, it was meant to just kind of be like a place for like, you know, kind of like, hey, share funny images, but kind of like, this is my thought, my thoughts and secrets. But it became a place uh, for citizen journalism because of the anonymity in Iraq. Um, you know, people were able to send images of the violence that was happening layered over with a text saying, hey, avoid this area. Oh my God, this is so it ended up being a place of citizen journalism. However, the people from Whisper say, you know, well, that's not what we're into. Let's, but, so they're trying to, you know, they work with Universal Studios, Hulu. Um, this was for a movie uh, that I would never see, um, something about romance, but it, they kind of sent like these images and these stills that people like, do text over them. It was a really horrific execution. Um, but overall, I think Whisper is a kind of a place that if you want to do a leak for a product that you have out, if you want to kind of do some teasers, it might be an interesting place to play. Now, Secret is very similar to Whisper. What Secret originated as, it was almost a sort of business espionage. It was around the workplace. You kind of get together with a group of people and be like, oh, Tom has herpes. And, uh, you know, or it's just like, you know, hey, here's a new project. Oh, this is kind of cool. So it was, it was meant to be a kind of a, a way in to figure out uh, what's happening in the business world. Now, what happens is they're like, oh, dude, Whisper's like totally awesome. Let's do the same thing. So they redesigned their app with a beautiful fox, I must say. Um, and now it kind of turned into uh, a college campus thing. They're trying to, they're trying to get with the, with, with, with the kids these days, you know. Um, but with the work thing, I told my boss that my cat had leukemia. Like, that was one of their excuses for calling out of work. That was one example of the business place. So you're still seeing a business usage here. Um, but uh, you can, you know, s same idea. You start anonymous, see what people nearby you are saying, because you can also just pick up uh, all that chatter. Um, and then your posts kind of get loved. Very similar to Whisper. Um, but what I'd say is because it's a Me Too product, stay away. If you're going to go, go with the big boys at Whisper. Um, now, rooms. This is uh, AOL chat rooms 20 years later, but by Facebook. Um, so this is kind of for people to gather around interests, the New York Mets, or whatever, and um, you, people kind of go in, and it's anonymous, you join a chat. Now, um, it's kind of like Reddit, but they're trying to capitalize on the subreddit community, um, but they've raised $30 million in funding. However, the only way you can get in is if through a freaking QR code that you have to like post to Instagram, and then it's then you have to somehow, it's, it's a really, really cryptic, weird way to get in, and because of that, I say, eh, stay away. Um, now, dating apps. Uh, this is another place where all these millennials are communicating. Um, and I'm going to go through five of them. Um, Tinder, obviously the big one. Uh, swipe right, swipe left. Um, and it's dating in its most primal form. Uh, we see a billion swipes a day, approaching 50 million users. Um, here's the thing, they don't really allow advertisers, but they kind of do. They worked with the Mindy Project, and they kind of put like people from the show, like dating profiles up there. It was pretty lame. Um, 
Britney Spears, um, what she did, uh, or what she didn't do, uh, I think it was Jimmy, or what's his face, Seth Meyers, uh, I think put her profile up on Tinder. And uh, so then she got all these people like swiping on her. Um, so that was kind of neat. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is uh, another thing. It was a sort of, a lot of people are trying to get on Tinder either by sort of like just diving in and then getting pulled. This was a non-smoking campaign where they put the same woman smoking cigarettes uh, and then not smoking. And she got like 70% more swipe rights for yes uh, with the non-smoking pictures. It's the kind of way you say, hey, listen, even if you're smoking, smoke, you're less attracted. That's kind of cool. But they kind of went gorilla in, and Tinder is, is, is cracking down on that. It's a hard place to play, but I think it's things like this that are novel that are pretty neat. Um, then there's just like, there's a lot of culture around Tinder, not happening on Tinder. This is Tinder in Brooklyn. So there's this woman, she just keeps a, a, a Tumblr about her Tinder, um, and it's about all the weirdos. Um, it's called Tinder in Brooklyn, really, really sub to it. It's a phenomenal. Uh, it's just pretty much making fun of everybody on there. Um, I can't read the commentary down here, but it's like uh, uh, this guy meeting um, Reverend Al Sharpton, uh, my date made, and this other guy, Daniel 36, is like, there's no way he's 36. Um, Anyway, okay, the next one um, we have, yeah, so sorry, Tinder, uh, I'd say yes, go with it. Um, Bumble, now there is this woman, uh, she worked at Tinder, uh, there's all the sexual harassment stuff you may have remembered, she went off and then started a dating app exactly like Tinder, exactly like Tinder. However, there's one difference, only the women can reach out first. The guys, can't, the guys can sort of put it out there, but only the women can make that first contact. So it's kind of a safer place for women to play. It's called Bumble. Um, and it's kind of in response to guys' creepiness and shallowness and online dating. Um, so think of the same idea. Um, I'd say Bumble overall, it, it's starting to pick up a little bit, um, but I'd say play with it, especially if you're a female brand. Uh, it's kind of a female empowerment of dating. Um, now, Luxie, this is like Tinder, but for really rich people. Um, I think this is genius. Um, so you need a minimum income of $200,000 to join. Um, your dates are matched by your favorite luxury products and your professions. Um, and you guys, you can purchase like expensive gifts or, what, or even roses to send to women. It's so sleazy. But um, you, can, you know, people create their profiles, and you don't say, like, oh, what about you? You say your favorite brands, brands that you wear, like Louis Vuitton, blah, 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 blah. Um, but for Luxy, I would say yes. If you're a luxury brand, milk it, because this app will be dead in a year, so you might as well get the most out of it while it's there. Um, Coffee meets bagel, this is interesting. You get one match a day, and after 24 hours, if you do not make contact, that, that date evaporates. So it's meant to like, all right, because a lot of people sort of Tinder slut, they kind of do like five apps a day, um, and, or sorry, five dates a day, um, and they kind of just like, you know, whore around from one to another to another. This is meant to be kind of a safer place, a bit more of a quality over quantity. Um, it connects to your Facebook graph, and it connects you with friends of friends to even do a sort of uh, check, a safety check. Um, they just turned down $30 million in Shark Tank because they feel it's a really, really interesting place to play. Um, horrible design with their logo. Uh, so that's not the reason I'm giving it no. The reason I'm giving it no is because of Hinge. Hinge literally stole, I'm seeing, I'm thinking, I don't know if you sense a theme yet. Hinge literally stole Coffee Meets Bagel. But Hinge has, uh, they've got 12 million in funding, but they are right now, they're picking up where Coffee Meets Bagel left out, um, which is better marketing. Um, it's the exact same thing, but you can get up to five dates a day. So I think people had the demand. Um, and there's people doing 10 million swipes a day, uh, which is a lot. So Hinge, I'd say that's the place you're gonna wanna go for the quality of dating. Um, now, group messaging apps. So uh, Kick, um, pardon the ASDF, uh, I think proofreading is for wimps. Um, but this is, uh, users sign up with screen names instead of email addresses and phone numbers. 70% uh, of these users are between 13 and 25. 24 million kick me Instagram posts a day. Essentially what you do is you post um, images uh, and then, have, then people can then start chats with you. Um, it is, here's a horrible one that 16 handles dude is like, who handled it best? Let the, let the rainbow cookie battle begin. Uh, you know, reply left or right for your favorite thing. This is horrible. If you're going to be working with this app, please do not do this horse shit Facebook type stuff uh, in there. Try to do something more interesting. I don't have what the answer is. But um, with all those kick me posts, we have people post pictures and kick me saying, you know, they'll attach it to the Instagram pics. Um, as you can see, the nearly dick pics over there or whatever, but they'll attach it and then people will find them on kick me with their handle and then start a conversation. Um, I'd say the verdict is no. Um, fire chat, this is amazing. We at this conference aren't 
unfortunate, but what happens is their uh, fire chat is meant to be able to uh, be a mess, a person to person messaging service where you do not need a cellular signal or Wi-Fi. What it does is use the Wi-Fi antennas between two phones or Bluetooth for people to connect in a close by radius. Now what does that mean? It's meant at festivals it's going to be Super sweet. Um, it means that there's there's a lot of things that you can do uh, that where there is no signal. It ended up being a place for black tap protesters in Iraq and Hong Kong. So it took us on a bigger life than than itself. Great for festivals, great for concerts. Oh shit, my time's running out. But anyway, with Fire Chat, I'd say yes. Um, rap Chat. This is like Snapchat, but you send raps. They give you beats, and you can send it every day. This just came out, but it's got 101,000 downloads already, and it is amazing. Uh, I almost thought of putting a Rap Chat in here for you guys, but I figure I'm going to run out of time. But my verdict on Rapture, you can have all custom beats. What advertisers can put in custom beats? Think of a music, uh, you know, pl places where you have iconic sounds, maybe different talent. Um, where, with that, I say it with Rapture, hell yes. Um, and now, to wrap it up, doing it right, the American way, what we want to do is, uh, you know, these are all the apps we looked at. These are the only ones worth investigating. I'm sure you'll find a way to ruin them, like I said earlier, but try and do it very conscientiously. Um, but uh, I think the big takeaways, there's three big takeaways. Um, if you're going to get into these apps, honestly, uh, research your brand, use them for research. Look at the behavior, understand how people are talking about your brands, your competitors, and your category, and then let them do a snapshot and let it inform your other work. That's actually better than getting on there and making an ass of yourself um, and wasting your money. Then also, lurk first, launch later. So hide in, hide in the corner and see how people are behaving, and then jump in. Do not just jump in. People, we've seen that on Reddit, um, that advertisers come in and just, once again, go from like, Ne zero sentiment to all negative sentiment. Um, and then your activations are not one size fits all. Each and every one of these apps has its own community, own way of talking. They are not like the other, so make sure it is custom uh, in that and based off of what the previous things, learning. And, um, and then finally, get in early and get in cheap. Um, Snapchat is now expensive. That's why we talked about some of these other apps like RapChat and everything like that. So now is your chance to get in. Um, and I think I didn't even have a chance to put in a thank you slide, so that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you. You mentioned getting in early, and I think that's where a lot of agencies and brands kind of want to figure it out. Just really quickly, what is what is the way to keep up and know what is starting to bubble up before it starts to bubble up? Um, I'd say don't read about it, but just literally, whenever you see like a Digiday post or whenever you see, uh, you know, any of these apps, just literally get in there and join them. Um, I mean. The, it, that's really kind of the best way. Just play around and kind of just get a feel for it. Um, and that's, yeah, just go in and play. Okay, cool. Thanks, Ryan. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so really quickly, Brian Morrissey,